Hello, my name is Megan Gray and I'm a general dental practitioner. Today we'd like to give you an introduction into intraoral radiography. The three key areas we want to discuss today are radiation safety, infection control and technique. To help us illustrate this, we're going to create a clinical situation and today we have Natalie as our patient and Jamel is going to be our dental assistant. I've already examined Natalie and we've determined that the x-rays we need are bite wing radiographs and two periapical x-rays. I've discussed this with Natalie and she's happy to proceed. Before we begin, we need to discuss radiation safety. Essentially what this means is that we always want to minimise the patient's exposure to radiation. We do this in two ways. Firstly, through taking an accurate clinical diagnosis and secondly, through using the correct technique. We don't want to be repeating x-rays, hence increasing the patient's exposure to the radiation. Also, for children and women of childbearing age, we always like to place a lead apron over the patient and you'll notice that Jamel has already placed the lead apron on our patient today. It's always prudent to ask women if they're pregnant and if your patient is pregnant, we try and defer taking the x-rays until after the baby is born or if that's not practical, we'll try and defer till after the first trimester. We have two sizes of PSP or sensor plates. Size two is used for adults and size one is used for children. We're now going to place our size two sensor plate within its protective sleeve. One side of the sensor plate is a lighter color and this is the photosensitive side of the plate. This is always positioned towards the black or closed side of our sleeve. Jamel will then seal the top of the sleeve by removing the adhesive. You'll notice that the other side has a clear window which reveals the necessary detail for us to be able to orient our x-ray correctly. The first x-ray we're going to take today is the bite wing radiograph. Bite wings are used to detect interproximal caries on the posterior teeth. One bite wing will expose the coronal aspects of the posterior teeth from the premolars to the molars in the upper and lower arch. As part of a routine examination, this would normally involve a left and right bite wing, but today we're going to demonstrate the left bite wing only. So Natalie, what we're going to do today is I'm just going to gently place this into your mouth. It may be uncomfortable just for a few seconds. We're going to get you to bite firmly on the bite plate, and then I'll line up the x-ray and we'll pop outside for a few seconds to take the film. This is an important part of radiation safety that all the personnel leave the room at this time. So Natalie, we'll get you to open your mouth. I'm just going to rotate the sensor plate gently adjacent to the lower teeth and lateral to the tongue. And I'm seating that bite plate directly onto the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Natalie, close your teeth firmly together there. This positions our bite wing holder in the correct position. The long cone is then positioned so that the handle of the x-ray is roughly parallel to the line we find on the long cone. This gives us a good guide of our positioning. Also, the patient's upper and lower arches, you'll notice, are evenly exposed. We'll now pass the sensor plate across to our assistant ready for processing. Please note our infection control measures again at this stage. I'm going to Pass the sensor plate across to Jamel who has clean hands. She's holding the sensor downwards away from the light and placing it free of saliva contamination into our black box ready to be processed. The next part of our demonstration today will be a periapical x-ray of the patient's upper incisors. Periapical x-rays differ from bite wings in that they expose the full length of the tooth. So in this case we use a uh, paralleling technique. The paralleling technique is the most common type of technique used to take a periapical x-ray. The principle behind it is that the x-ray sensor and the long axis of the tooth are aligned parallel. The positioning of the sensor within the, the holder is in a portrait configuration and our orientation marker for a periapical x-ray is always towards the occlusal surface. The long cone is positioned over the ring of the x-ray holder with the handle parallel to the long axis of the cone. Nice and still again Natalie and we're ready to take that x-ray. The 
Paralleling technique is always our first choice of technique when taking a periapical radiograph. This is because there's less radiation scatter and the x-ray is also more reproducible at a later stage, hence again reducing the patient's exposure to radiation. In some cases, the patient can't tolerate our paralleling holder and so we opt for a second technique known as the bisecting angle technique. So Natalie, just rest your head back again there. I'm going to pop this up and I'm going to rest the sensor plate up behind Natalie's upper incisors and we're going to get Natalie's help here with her right index finger to pop a finger up behind the sensor on her palate to hold this in place. This is the positioning of the long cone for the bisecting angle technique. The cone sits perpendicular to the bisecting plane between the long axis of the teeth and the dental sensor. Our final x-ray is a periapical x-ray of the patient's lower left molar region. Once again, we're going to use a paralleling technique and we have the paralleling holder in place. Again, our orientation marker is situated towards the occlusal surface or the bite plate. For the posterior paralleling technique, we're positioning the sensor in a landscape format and we're going to slide the sensor into the floor of the mouth and seat that on the occlusal plane. This is causing the patient quite a bit of discomfort, so we're going to use an alternate technique known as the bisecting angle technique. So we can use either a holder for the bisecting angle technique, or once again, we could get the patient to hold this with her finger. In this case, I think because the patient is uncomfortable there and gagging a little bit anyway, we're going to use what's called a snap ray holder. A snap ray holder works in a very similar way to the other holders. It has a bite plate that the patient bites on, but we use it for the bisecting angle technique. Natalie, can you open once again for us? And this time, again, I'm just going to rotate the sensor into the sulcus in, in Natalie's mouth, lateral to the tongue, and I'm going to seat the, the bite plate on her occlusal plane and get her to close firmly together on that. The cone is positioned so that we're exposing from the apices through to the coronal area of the teeth. And it's situated so that the cone is placed perpendicular to the bisecting plane between the long axis of the teeth and the position of the sensor plate. So Natalie, nice and still again, and we'll just pop next door. That concludes our demonstration today. The key features to remember are radiation safety, infection control, and dental technique. They say that excellence is in the detail. We hope today we've provided you with enough detail to start you on your way to becoming excellent radiographers.